When it comes to complex issues with multiple variables, there is rarely a response like good or bad, this or that, right or wrong, and so on. However, even in situations where we are not thinking unilaterally, we often strive to arrive at clear and singular determinations about ideas and beliefs. Whether this is naturally, culturally influenced, or both, the result of this, particularly in the modern world, is that we are constantly compelled to choose one thing over another. Capitalism versus socialism. Liberal versus conservative. Masculinity versus femininity. Emotion versus reason. But what does this way of thinking restrict us from understanding? What is the purpose of absolute and clear truth, one-sided, that prevents us from better understanding more complex things? There is a flawed nature to this type of binary and hyper-rational thinking that we often fail to recognize. Instead of just reason, clarity and truth, what if you tried to think more modestly and fluidly that are much more subtle and nuanced ways to assess and understand ideas, language, meaning, and the nature of reality itself, which is exactly what philosophy is about. There are not always true forms of things. Often, there are nuances beyond appearances that should also be privileged, perhaps even above appearances. There is a fundamental tendency in general thinking to think in terms of binary oppositions, where one idea is always more valuable than its opposite. This way of thinking can often be deficient and restrictive. Therefore, the goal of this video is to expand this way of thinking, reducing loyalty and attachment to any single idea, and instead compelling someone to seriously consider seemingly opposing ideas. For every idea or view we favor, there is value and need in its opposite. Take, for example, very rudimentary cases of light and darkness, sound and silence, good and neutral. In each of these cases, you need the opposite to understand the meaning of one or the other. Because there are always traces of the other and the meaning of the opposites. Likewise, in the cases of more complex binaries, such as femininity and masculinity, equality and inequality, reason and emotion, like light and darkness or sound and silence, both sides create a dynamic spectrum of flaws and merits both largely depending on each other for any meaning. This is due to the tendency to think in terms of binary opposition, which is largely supported by our faith in language as a means of arriving at hierarchical and ordered truths. Generally, modern thinking operates under the assumption that there is a singular realm of truth beyond language that can be reached through language. This way of thinking when it comes to complex matters, is often erroneous because language is unavoidably subjective and meaning is always context-dependent. The meaning of words is constantly being affected by traces of other words and by what is beyond words in a constant and endless interplay between them. We can identify the meaning of any word only by recognizing its relation and difference from other words. This web of language and contexts is constantly evolving and unraveling. Therefore, there can never be a singular and absolute truth defined by a theory, as it will always be subject to the subjectivity and the inherent change of meaning in language. Consider that it is in the tension and differences between ideas where we possibly find a more holistic understanding of things and it is where we possibly find wisdom. Of course, it is also where we find uncertainty, confusion, and ambiguity. Whenever we follow this path, we must remember that there will also be no binary clarity, right or wrong, good or bad. This, as mentioned earlier, most of us in the modern world tend not to like, but this condition is something we must embrace and accept if we desire intellectual honesty and maturity. Meanings and ideas 
each instance of each casts different degrees of light and shadow on us. Being confused and uncertain is not a sign of intellectual weakness, but rather an inevitable and recurring fate in an honest and open-minded intellectual journey. Ultimately, there are no simple solutions to life, to the issues and problems that arise within it. The false belief that there are only leads us to cling to and defend ideas with severe resistance, losing the potential value and insights of their counterparts. In fact, many of the ideas and beliefs originated from the human mind are deeply flawed, but simultaneously, most ideas and beliefs offer something, some value, some insight, some context, and digging under the conflict of ideas and exploring the need for their tension inspires us to display a kind of intellectual modesty, humility, and patience. And even more, above all, it makes us better people and probably smarter and more mature. Now, thinking about making it clear how this idea works, I will describe the levels of thought from the simplest to the most complex. Remember that all these types go through our heads daily and we use them to assess and make our life decisions. So the better you understand and master this subject, the greater your personal growth will be. Let's go. Binary level of thought. This concept refers to a form of reasoning that categorizes experiences and concepts in a strictly dualistic manner, in two opposites. It is the most basic form, as described earlier. In this type of thinking, the world is perceived and interpreted in terms of pairs of opposites such as yes and no, black and white, good or bad. This model of thought is considered simple and devoid of nuances, representing a fundamental approach to understanding reality. Interestingly, binary thinking is not exclusive to humans. It is also observed in the animal kingdom. Many animals have the ability to make decisions based on simple binary assessments, especially when it comes to decisions that affect their survival and well-being. For example, an animal may decide to approach or avoid a situation based on whether it perceives something as threatening or not. However, while this binary approach can be effective in survival situations and in contexts where quick and clear decisions are needed, it has its limitations when applied to more complex situations, especially those involving human social, emotional, and ethical contexts. Binary thinking tends to overlook the nuances and complexity inherent in most situations. For example, by categorizing something strictly as good or bad, binary thinking fails to recognize that many aspects of life incorporate elements of both. Additionally, this form of thinking can lead to hasty judgments and decisions that do not consider all relevant variables. In human reality, where scenarios are often laden with multiple interconnected variables, a more nuanced and less binary approach is often needed to fully understand and respond appropriately. Therefore, while binary thinking is a fundamental and useful cognitive tool, it represents only a very basic level of thinking and should be balanced with more complex approaches to effectively navigate the complex world we live in. Scale thinking level. This represents a significant evolution from binary thinking. At this stage, we enter the realm of shades of gray, where the nuances and subtleties within a single subject are recognized and evaluated. This level of thinking is more complex and reflects a capacity that sets humans apart from other animals, requiring a higher degree of reasoning and advanced awareness. Unlike binary thinking, which categorizes things in a strictly dualistic manner, scale thinking allows for a more nuanced evaluation. Here, we acknowledge that a subject or situation can have many layers, and different aspects can coexist, often in contradictory or complementary ways. For example, instead of judging something as simply good or bad, we consider the degree to which something may be beneficial or detrimental in different contexts or for different people. This type of thinking is especially important in situations where there are rarely absolute answers or clear solutions. It allows us to assess situations with greater depth, 
considering a range of factors that can influence an outcome or decision. It also helps us understand that our own perspectives can be limited and that different viewpoints can offer valuable insights. Furthermore, it is also related to levels of preference, not just a binary assessment of good or bad. For example, we may prefer one option over another based on a series of criteria that go beyond a simple positive or negative evaluation. This approach allows us to make more informed and nuanced choices, taking into account a broader range of factors and potential consequences. In summary, thinking along a scale is a crucial mental tool for navigating a complex and multifaceted world. It allows us to move beyond simplifications and embrace complexity, offering a path to more thoughtful decisions and a deeper understanding of situations and the people around us. This level of thinking is not only a superior cognitive skill, but also an essential practice for personal growth and interpersonal understanding. Thinking level as a two-dimensional graph. Similar to a bell curve when compared to mathematics, thinking levels can be visualized as a two-dimensional graph. This representation is an effective way to understand how our thoughts vary according to the moment and perspective. Imagine a horizontal axis representing the intensity or quality of thinking, ranging from good to bad. On the vertical axis, we have the probability or frequency of that thought, ranging from low to high. When we plot our thoughts on this graph, we get a curve that can take various shapes depending on the circumstances. At the center of the curve, we find the average thinking level. These are thoughts that occur most frequently and reflect a neutral state of mind. They are common thoughts that do not stand out as particularly positive or negative. They are related to our everyday life and are essential for the regular functioning of our mind. At the bottom of the curve are low quality or negative thoughts. These thoughts can arise in moments of stress, worry or sadness. They tend to be self-critical, pessimistic and can harm our emotional and mental well-being. At the top of the curve are high quality or positive thoughts. These thoughts are usually associated with moments of joy, happiness and gratitude. They are optimistic, constructive and contribute to our emotional well-being. The shape of the curve can vary from person to person and from situation to situation. For example, on a cold day, someone's perspective on the temperature can influence their thoughts. For a person who enjoys the cold, being in cold weather may be seen as a positive thing, generating thoughts of appreciation for the cool weather. However, for someone who prefers warmth, the same situation may lead to negative thoughts about the discomfort of the cold. Additionally, thought levels can be affected by external factors such as personal events, stress, relationships, and life circumstances. Therefore, the same thought that is considered good in one context may be perceived as bad in another. In summary, thought levels can be represented as a two-dimensional bell curve, ranging from the quality and intensity of thoughts. They are dynamic and influenced by the moment and personal perspective. Understanding this dynamic can help raise awareness of our thought patterns and improve our mental health allowing us to cultivate more positive and constructive thoughts when needed. Thought level as a three-dimensional graph. When considering the simultaneous interaction of three variables that work in synergy, thinking can be compared to a three-dimensional graph. This representation adds considerable complexity to how we assess and make decisions in our lives and requires an enhanced capacity for intelligence to master and understand. Imagine a three-dimensional space where each axis represents a different variable. To illustrate this concept, we can use the example of balancing the right amount of food, exercise, and sleep in our lives. The first axis can represent the amount of food we consume. Overeating can lead to health problems such as excessive weight gain while eating too little can result in lack of energy and malnutrition. Finding the right balance of calorie intake is crucial for maintaining health and well-being. The second axis can represent the amount of exercise we engage in. 
Too much physical activity can lead to injuries and excessive fatigue, while lack of exercise can cause health problems related to inactivity. Finding the right balance between exercise and rest is essential for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. The third axis can represent the amount of sleep we get. Getting too little sleep can cause fatigue and health issues, while oversleeping can also have negative effects on our well-being. Finding the right balance of sleep is crucial for maintaining alert mind and a healthy body. Complexity arises when we try to balance these three variables simultaneously. There is no one-size-fits-all answer, because what is right for one person may not be the same for another. Additionally, these variables are interconnected, meaning that making adjustments in one can affect the others. For example, if someone increases their amount of exercise, they may need more food to sustain that activity, but they may also need more sleep to recover properly. Therefore, making decisions that take all these variables into consideration requires a three-dimensional thinking skill. These three-dimensional dilemmas can arise in various areas of life, such as balancing work, personal life, and mental health, managing interpersonal relationships, or making financial decisions. Each situation involves a unique combination of variables that require careful consideration and a balanced approach. Therefore, three-dimensional thinking involves the simultaneous analysis of three interconnected variables and represents a more advanced level of cognitive complexity. Mastering the art of balancing these variables in different life contexts requires intelligence, adaptability, and the ability to make informed decisions that promote long-term well-being and success. Multivariable thinking level. Thinking levels can take many forms and degrees of complexity, and one of the most intriguing levels is thinking the right amount of multiple variables. At this level, we face situations where we need to balance and make decisions based on several variables. But pure logic often isn't sufficient to explain our choices. This is similar to intuition and emotions, because it's challenging to verbalize the underlying reasons for our conclusions. Imagine a simple example. Choosing a friend to spend time with. You may have several variables in mind, such as affinity, geographic proximity, common interests, availability of time, and so on. However, in many situations, the final decision cannot be fully explained by rational analysis of these variables. Instead, you may intuitively feel which friend is the right choice for that moment, even if you can't completely explain why. This is because thinking the right amount of multiple variables involves a complex combination of subjective and emotional factors. It can be influenced by past experiences, subconscious impressions, and even personal intuitions that cannot be easily expressed in words. It's a process that occurs deep in our subconscious and is shaped by our life, history, values, and emotions. Another common example of this type of thinking occurs in art and creativity. A painter, when creating a work of art, may intuitively decide which color palette to use, how to distribute space on the canvas, and which style to apply. These decisions often transcend pure logic and are guided by a sense of harmony and aesthetics that is difficult to explain in rational terms. The ability to use this level of thinking is valuable in many aspects of life, especially in making complex decisions that involve multiple variables and uncertainties. However, it's also a cognitive aspect that can be challenging to enhance since it cannot be fully broken down into logical steps. Instead, it involves trusting our intuition and the sensations that arise from our accumulated experience and personal understanding. In summary, the level of thinking the right amount of multiple variables is a fascinating aspect of the human mind. It resembles intuition and emotions because it often cannot be fully explained by logic. It's a type of thinking that arises from our subconscious experience and understanding and is valuable for making complex decisions and creating meaningful outcomes in various areas of life. By developing these different levels of thinking, we empower ourselves to deal with the complexity and ambiguity inherent in the world. 
This multifaceted approach enriches our understanding, promotes empathy, and opens us up to various perspectives. Ultimately, recognizing that all ideas and beliefs are imperfect, but also offer value, frees us from the need to seek absolute truths. Instead, we focus on better understanding the complexities and interconnections of the world, always ready to learn, grow, and adapt our views as new information and experiences are acquired. This more open and reflective approach to reality guides us toward greater wisdom and intellectual maturity, bringing a richer and deeper understanding of life's matters in general. I hope you enjoyed the video. And since you've made it to the end, share your thoughts and write Armored Wisdom in the comments. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. See you soon.